Thank you, Linda. I really appreciate the invite and the opportunity to be here to um, speak on a very important topic. Actually, I work for Boston. You used to also say this is not unimportant. I really like that saying, and it's really true. But I really appreciate all that you do and, and the work of your team at the foundation. Um, I've, I've enjoyed the time that I've been here thus far. I was able to actually participate for a little bit of the second part of the case study. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing who wins it. I, I didn't get to see it this morning, but, but it all looked good to me. So uh, a couple things. The, um, this is a great event. Um, it's something that where I work is something we talk about all the time. Um, Ball Corporation is a corporation that's been around for over 130 years. We were founded by five brothers uh, based on a core set of principles that we hold to today. And it's um, back then, of course, we were a lot smaller. Today, we're, as Linda said, over 15,000 employees. And, and the question is, is how do you preserve that culture, right? That's something I know Bill was a big believer in. And, and as you're growing, you deal with pressures and to be able to maintain those core principles around the globe, that's something that we think about as a leadership team all the time. It's interesting, my job at Ball, I'm actually the Chief Information Officer, and, and uh, what I do is basically what was written up in that business case, and so as I received that, I read it, and the first thing I thought of, I'm like, okay, is Bo tracking me, or what's going on? <laughs> because this is pretty close to kind of what I deal with all day, every day, in some regard. Um, but it, it's, uh, it's something that truly is becoming more and more of a challenge. If you think about technology and the implications on ethics, it really comes down to the question of what is ethical versus what is possible. And as technology continues to advance, that gap becomes wider and wider. And, and we'll talk about some of those examples. I guess what, what I wanted to do is, is maybe spend a little bit of time talking about how we deal with these challenges on a day-in and day-out basis at Ball. And it's uh, what Bertha said in terms of uh, what Bill believed in and, and really walking and talk. Give a, a few examples of, of how we go about doing that because that, that's really important. And then what I want to do is maybe um, describe some of the challenges that we see today uh, with technology. And, and then if someone asked me, they said, okay, I'd be curious to hear how you would handle the location-based technology problem. What would be your answer to that? And, and hold that thought. I'll come back to that. <laughs> But, but for me, it's, uh, it's folks like Alfonso, it's the work that we're doing with the foundation, it's the faculty and what you're focused on in terms of really creating awareness on why ethics is so important to us. It, you know, I love you know, Bill's statement that, that basically competitive advantage for business is derived from the ethics of the employees, and I think that's so true, it really is. And so I commend you all, the faculty, for what you're doing with these students. You should be proud of that. Thank you very much. <laughs> You know, at the end of the day, it's it's uh, it's it, my views on, on, on being ethical are um, it, it's all about making sure that you're transparent. You know, I have three kids, three teenagers, and, and I tell you, they watch closely everything that you do. And so, uh, there's a lot of material, there's a lot of literature, there's a lot of words out there to talk about these principles. But at the end of the day, walking and talk is what's really important. People watch you, and they observe, and they mimic. I, I was thinking of a, a, a quote that says, uh, words are easy to copy, but people really mimic your actions. And, and my kids, it's, it's true, it's, you know, they are close in age, they're teenagers, they, they have two driver's license and, and a permit, and, uh, and so they're very critical in my driving skills, right? <laughs> so, uh, it's amazing, they could be late at night and I'm driving along there in a car with me and I don't signal because there's no one for like two towns, and it's like, that's like you need to build a signal, I'm like, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm signaling other than you. But <laughs> and so now, I don't know if you know this, it's, it's when we grew up, it was 10 and 2. So you're kind of driving around 10 and 2 in there. And like, Dad, what, what, what is this 10 and 2? Or they're driving. I'm like, you're supposed to have your chance at 10 and 2. It's like, it's not 10 and 2. I'm like, what do you mean it's not 10 and 2? It's here because if, in case you're in an accident and your airbag's deployed and blah, 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 I'm like, well, if you were 10 and 2, then maybe you wouldn't have airbags deployed. <laughs> Really, the point here is they, they observe everything, and, and, uh, and quite honestly, employees do as well. 
so the consistency of management around those core values is extremely important as i said you know we started out one hundred thirty years ago we're over fifteen thousand employees and and it's interesting the few cases that i listen to with regard to this location based challenge here is there's a company there that's at eighty seven hundred employees they're looking to double in a year or so that in itself creates a huge ethical challenge right it's when you're trying to preserve the culture and and you're dealing with foreign laws emerging markets etc there's a lot of challenges that we face and there's a lot that we think about as a senior leadership team involved because we have the same situation every time we enter a new market one of the first questions that we ask is how do we make sure and in fact before we even acquire we look at that to say are they a cultural fit if they're not a cultural fit then it doesn't matter how good the deal is we'll probably walk away from it because there's just you know they're too far from colorado so if if they don't have those core set of values then it's it's probably in the long run not worth it so that's something that we think about day in and day out um when i think about bill's principles um and and i and i resonate very well with them um it's true that we live by those same things in ball and and trust is important i tell you that the lead team that that i operate with i trust them right we we are committed to the same goals um in ball we have what we call a triple bottom line approach which is i don't know if you're familiar with andy sabbats and his book on the triple bottom line if you're not take a look at it because it's it's very consistent again with where where bill's beliefs when those are and, and where we are in ball and it essentially says um, there's a, a balance in in business between your shareholders and delivering the financial returns that they're looking for the environment which is absolutely important there's a lot of discussions around sustainability etc and then the community and the community is a broader community community made up of employees and the markets that we serve that that triple bottom line approach is really a balanced way to make sure that the short term pressures excuse me of wall street you're not sacrificing long term community relationships or those employee relationships etc so so with with the the team that i work with everyone shares those same core set of values and and we walk that talk every day and and i think that helps us when you think about the employees around the world so a little bit um you know i, I have to uh, when i look at this event and from what i've experienced i just know bill would be extremely proud of what he said here today and it really is a reflection of what he set out to accomplish and so i again commend Linda and your team and um, the business case again is is a perfect one it's very timely so you know that i never did actually meet bill and it's kind of interesting because um i know that he's had tremendous influence on my life i'm a native of colorado native of denver my kids are uh, fifth generation sixth generation on my wife's side fourth generation on my side so when i stand in front of the legislature i say that to them i'm like i'm not sure if that's 10th generation but it, it lends the immediate <laughs> credibility when you're uh, advocating for doing the right thing in colorado but but bill um colorado for a while was the actual telecommunications uh, hub of the world i mean this is kind of where it all came together and, and certainly bill was one of those pioneers and i work in in telecommunications and it's kind of why i'm here today and and the other is as mentioned i i also as a uh, uh, am a product of the daniel college of business and i didn't get a chance to say phil please give we'll, we'll get <laughs> right uh, but but i never did actually get to meet bill and um and uh, and but however the more i learn about you know the, the more i really respect what he stood for and, and and i encourage you to really think about a couple of quotes that that, that i heard that i read from him uh, one of his beliefs and this is again it, it ties to to what we believe be personally as well as well as this this the whole notion of uh, integrity and unwavering ethical behavior provides the ultimate business advantage and 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 the students think about that because it, it really at the end of the day we have a lot of manufacturing facilities around the world but anyone can go buy assets and deploy those assets in a manufacturing facility what makes us competitive is the people that work for us and so if, if we believe in the people and the people follow our principles and and we are able to do that around the world it just helps us to continue to be competitive around the world one one thing just um you may not know this about ball and the products um there were products out there that I'm I'm pretty confident that we manufactured Pepsi products 
Coke products, perhaps beer products. And I didn't know this in, until after I, I started with Ball, but if you look on there, there's a little ball symbol on, on those products. And ironically, when, when you know that and you taste that product, somehow it just tastes a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't have the Ball logo on there. And it probably doesn't say it. Uh, say it's probably not our product. But anyway, the, uh, but, but those values extend all the way down to the quality of the products and services that we deliver. And so, so uh, with, with Bill's influence on my life and, and how that uh, has helped me get to where I am, is, is very important. The, the one piece that I think about when I kind of bring what I believe what, what Ball is about and Bill's uh, principle-based ethics, um, again, it kind of gets back to this whole notion of the community and, 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 and thinking about the, the bigger picture of, of our society, I think it's really important. Um, I want to talk for a little bit about what technology or how technology is influencing or it's cre creating the conundrums or the conflicts that again are oftentimes uh, things that we face day in and day out. Um, one of the things in business that, that, that everyone strives for is this whole notion of the perfect forecast. Um, the perfect forecast, even if you look at your business case that you're reading, there's this um, when you look at a forecast, the, the, the more accurate you can be on your forecast, the more popular you're going to be as a company, right? And so why I, I bring that up is because there's this phenom around this big data explosion, right? you got the internet, you got all these devices, you can collect all this information, and the more information I can collect, and the smarter I can be about the algorithms that I apply against that data, I can better predict what you, what you do as a consumer, the things that you're going to buy, kind of... What, 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 what places you're going to go to. I, I think you're probably hearing all these things. And so, so the, the question on that is, even when I go back to some of the projects that I've worked on way back when, way before the Telecom Act passage, and, and the, we were concerned about competition when I was with US West, we'd go out and, and bring all this data together and, and figure out who our most profitable customers were, and if competition's come along, where are we at most risk? And you could, you could bring all this data together, mesh in. This is kind of a little bit before GPS, actually. Imagine that with GPS, what you would do with those things. The, the, the challenge is, is there's so much data out there. The mobility devices, there's sensing technology everywhere. Uh, in the manufacturing world that, that, that we work in, every time a, a, a piece of machine changes state, we capture that information. Because we've moved from an analog capability to a digital capability, so you're really in tune with uh, the quality of your product, et cetera. Well, that data on its own is probably not problematic. But it's when you bring data set A, data set B, data set C together, that's where you potentially have the ethical challenge, right? So with facial recognition technology, a person swiping a car, or starting an ATM card, driving by a location, the ability to send them an advertisement because they, they need something. You know, at some point, we've crossed this bridge where we, we've basically replicated DNA with information because information is so pervasive. And so there's, there's ethical challenges out there every day. Uh, and as computers get faster, then that, imp that probability just con continues to grow. So um, that's one. Someone also asked me about um, cyber activity. And, and I don't know if you read what's going on, but it was actually, there was, uh, I think, on MSNBC or one of them yesterday, there was a, uh, a killer app out there now where purportedly these guys are able to control airplanes. Did anyone see that? Yeah. Okay. You might want to take a look at that. And, and they asked me, um, how real is all this cyber activity? Is it being blown out of proportion? Should we be concerned about it? And what I would tell you is, you should be concerned about it. Uh, every day, there's just more open doors, people getting access, and as things go online, the, the things that you can do now from afar, it, it's pretty tremendous. So I spend a lot of my time as a CIO really working on how do we keep the bad people out of our environment, keep them out of our data? And similarly, for you as a consumer, how many people are accessing your information and what are they doing with that? That's a problem that's growing every day. It's getting bigger, it's getting larger. Um, another area that, that I, I think we should think about in terms of a sustainable culture is uh, uh, the whole notion of the digital divide. You know, they kind of went away and Bill was one of the uh, pioneers to uh, help make sure that we had broadband and people access to the internet, things like that. But 
the reality is they're still the haves and have nots and so companies can exploit data and they can take advantage of things because people they just don't know they really don't know what's going on and so the ability to educate folks so that we truly in a sustainable community have everyone participating in this digital economy I think that's very important and so um, as we think about some of the challenges you know the, the laws are far behind technology and, and, and technology is only going to continue to accelerate at a faster pace whereby the laws are still going to take a while to catch up and so um, looking at how do we make sure that all aspects of the community are taking advantage of this digital world that we live in. I think that's very important. And again, the work that we're doing around the ethics and making sure that that's at the forefront, not an afterthought, I think is really important. Um, in terms of the business case, I, I guess a, a couple things that I, I would say about that. Um, if, if it takes four months to make a decision, then chances are it's probably not the right decision. It's probably not ethical. I mean, that's probably the first clue I would say. Okay. If, if you're waving over at that long, then it's probably not ethical. But I, um, I it, 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 to me, is a little bit of ethical dilemma, um, that whole location-based technology. I, I've got a daughter. She's 18 years old, beautiful young lady, and there's a lot of folks that like my daughter. And, and you know, so, so this location-based technology thought from my daughter, I, I don't know. I mean, I could see where that could uh, be helpful in some regards. <laughs> I am only kidding you. <laughs> but but there there are a couple things there. I, I guess in in every challenge there is an opportunity. And the one thing I would ask for that company is if that's an ethical challenge for a lot of companies, what can they do to combat that? If their competitors are going this direction, they can actually go the other direction and maybe put a competing product out there that helps those that aren't interested in that. At Ball, we don't do that. We we don't we don't track our employees. Uh, we do because of cyber activities and because of regulatory policies, et cetera. You really need to know what's going on uh, in terms of email and things like that. But as far as tracking employees, I, I just am opposed to that. Uh, I could see down the road on our aerospace side of the equation, uh, if we had an opportunity at a really large contract, and we do a lot of work that's behind the scenes, it's, it's uh, highly secretive. If a stipulation in that contract said that we had to track any of the employees that are working on that program, um, that that would be interesting. I, I know how we, we would react as a lead team. We we would sit down and talk about it, and if it, if it stood the test of our value proposition, we would absolutely have a conversation with the employees if we had to do that. If the contract stipulation says you're not allowed to tell your employees that you're doing this, we probably wouldn't do it. That, that's where we stand with it. So, so I, um, I just thought I would offer that um, and, uh, because you were working on that. That was a very interesting business case. L let me uh, just offer a couple of thoughts here in terms of, uh, in, in closing, some takeaways. Again, uh, uh, students, I think you have a great opportunity to really think about this and be leaders in this space. And quite honestly, when I'm next chapter of working on my golf game, I want you guys softening these type of calls, right? I don't want to be worried about this. And, and uh, if, if you do the research, you know, all the great societies, uh, when they fail, the reason why they fail is for this very reason, right? They kind of get away from their core values. And so there's a lot of challenges that we face as a nation, and, and that, that pressure to be competitive, et cetera, drives us down perhaps paths that we should not. And so. I would ask you all to think about what can you do to continue to further the ethics principle that Bill's talked about, the, the things that you've learned from your from your um, instructors, and, and, and really uh, go further and faster with that. I mean, it, it's really important to us. Um, I, I would say that um, one of the questions that I ask uh, day in and day out is what can I do more? And and that's something that I'm exploring more and more every day. What can I do in the position I'm in to help out with these topics and to, to make sure that, again, from the greater society, everyone's participating in that. Uh, Linda knows I, I have a very strong passion around math, science, technology, and, and I do believe that these problems that we face, if, if, if we have the right students that are seeking degrees in the hard sciences, I'm biased in that regard, and they're the ones that are out really trying to solve these problems. I think that's to our benefit, um, not just with this problem, but our competitive 
competitiveness as a nation and so making sure that we continue to sprinkle these principle based ethics over that up and coming group of leaders i can't do it alone the faculty can't do it alone it's really up to you and and how do we take new technology formats to really go viral with that conversation that's what i would ask you all to think about so um, i really enjoyed being here i i thought because um, there were so many different questions i would just pause and maybe open it up if there were some questions about what i do or particular to the business case i'd be happy to address that if that would be appropriate any questions out there any any don't be shy <laughs> i did take louisville in the brackets so. <laughs> okay so so hopefully um you, you get a little appreciation for some of the things that I do as a CIO. It, it stems from strategic to tactical, um, but at the end of the day, making sure that my employees understand the values that, that we operate by is extremely important. So I had asked you to extend that as well. Hey, go ahead. Well, I have a question for you. As I saw those uh, virtues that Bill espoused and that we all espoused when we were on credit you know, on, the, on the screen, I looked at them and I said, those really are common sense, aren't they? At what point do you think we, as a business community, got away from integrity and leadership and um, respect for one another? Um, again, I, I think it, it's, it's great when, from a technology standpoint, first I, I do agree, I think it's common sense, but it's, you know, even in government, um, I always treated um, what I did, my actions, as being just an open book. So whether it's my email, um, it was always subject to an open records request or you name it. Um, you treated every conversation as though it was going to end up in the press. And so that's just kind of how um, I operate. And, and I think it is, it's that acid test of your conscience. Uh, is this the right thing to do? I think the, the challenge though when it becomes a technology is it's not obvious. The, the boundaries of uh, what's ethical versus what's possible. Again, today, it looks a certain way. Tomorrow, it looks different because technology has evolved, right? So, so looking at one piece of information about an individual in itself is not an unethical challenge. It's, it's accepted widely. You take that information and couple it with another piece of information, have we just crossed the boundary? And it, and it doesn't happen just all of a sudden. It's, it's kind of an evolution. You kind of just end up there. And so it's, I think there's, it's, it's not the obvious, you know, is it okay for me to, you know, just go over to my neighbor's house, take some out of their fridge, and, you know, or anything like that, right? It's, it's more, there's a lot of small things that go on throughout a business day that it, it's really important to make sure that people understand, you know, what, what is appropriate, what's not appropriate, and, and maybe what the process is, if, if you hit an ethical dilemma, how do you deal with that? How do you face those things? So it's, it's because of technology, I, I think it's, it's progression as, at such a rate that, that we don't think about it. It just kind of evolves over time. It, again, I, I talked about a little bit of what we were doing on the, um, uh, back to some of the big data stuff. I mean, back then, it was just cool. We were just exploring. We had the whole dot-com thing going on. When people were getting online, you, you would gather this information, and, and it, we were just kind of experimenting. You really didn't know. Well, now looking back, there were probably some things that weren't appropriate, right? You know, I, I'm actually finding out things about individuals that you wouldn't normally do, and, but because it was possible, we would do those things. And now looking at, okay, where did that real boundary? I, I think that's really the challenge technology is really getting at. Um, let me probably confirm for you, I'm like a little mini nerd at heart. So I guess I'm, I'm fascinated by the technology um, phenomenon. I'm a cheerleader for it. I love it. But it, do you find that there is a direct correlation between advances in technology and really the the, the uh, amplification of, of failings in human nature? Things like Twitter bringing up narcissism or or um, uh, the anonymity factor of commenting bringing up the bullying side of people. I mean, is there do you see direct correlations between these jumps in technology and our own in ability inability to control ourselves? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean. It, I don't know. Has anyone like shared your iPod music with someone else? Right? Okay. There's 
it, it's not the big obvious thing, really. I mean, those things, we, we as a society, we're, we're still okay in that regard, but it's, it's over time, it just starts to erode, right? And so it starts with the small things, it starts to get bigger and bigger, and, and, and that's, that's really the challenge. It doesn't seem as obvious, which is back to my comments about the whole have, have nots and making sure people are educated. You know, we, um, back when I was growing up, had this uh, whole thing called duck and cover. Does anybody remember duck and cover? <laughs> kind of like Cold War action, right? Where in case of a nuclear event, you knew what to do, which is go in the hallway and kind of duck and cover. I don't know why we ever thought that would work. <laughs> I have no idea, but, but we were very well trained on that. And the question is, what's our modern day duck and cover? as you think about technology and, and, the, and the constant conflict that exists with, with technology. And it's, it starts small, but it gets big pretty quickly. Other questions? All right, so thanks for your time. Hopefully.